All right, guys, here we are with Twilight Masquerade. How does this set set up for a collection and an investment? It is the new Pokemon set coming out. And guys, I've been looking through it and looking through some of the artworks and it is looking like a really interesting set. And today I wanna to really look over how Twilight Masquerade is gonna go, you know, whether you want it for a collection or an investment, how I think the set will perform and whether or not it's a good set to go in on. You know, there, there is really some interesting things going on with Twilight Masquerade at the moment. But guys, if you are new here, this is a new channel that covers Pokemon collecting, Pokemon investing, and just general chats around new Pokemon sets, along with other TCG investments. If that's the kind of topics you're interested in, feel free to subscribe. Looking at Twilight Masquerade, guys, and, you know, being in the hobby for such a long time, and, and like, I've been in this hobby, you know, been collecting Pokemon for over 20 years and Yu-Gi-Oh! and other TCGs. I want to go over some of the points that I think are really great about this set, but I also want to cover where I think this set is falling short as well, and just going over where I think some of the loose ends of the set are and how I think it's going to go. So look guys, like, as most of you know, I spend hours and hours a week researching these topics to bring you the best information. So I really want to make sure that you guys get some real great info and value out of these videos because I don't want to just be covering off what everyone else does. I really want to go into the deep intricacies of these sets and talk about how they go in collections and you know potential investments as well. What I love is firstly, they, they didn't go with split sets, thankfully. They started with the split sets with Temporal Forces. I did mention before that I didn't really like that. I think that they're just a bit of a cash grab. I don't think, you know, for the collector that likes to do ETB collecting, if you have split sets, usually they try to collect both different versions of the different Pokemon. Thankfully for Twilight Masquerade, they haven't gone with that. Firstly, I want to say that the artwork and the presentation of Twilight Masquerade, I want to say I think it's the best out of Scarlet and Violet so far. The colors and how the booster packs look sensational, okay? I wanna just talk about first of displaying these as a set, I mean, as a sealed collection. They look incredible. And if that's what you like to do, collect sealed, I think Twilight Masquerade is really smashing it out of the park. Visually, it looks incredible. I love the colors of it. Really, really unique color scheme. But in terms of the cards, and I really want to go into that, I'm just here on now, and I'm just looking through some of the artworks, and I'm looking through the illustration rares, and there's some in particular that I'm a real big fan of, and one of that is the Infernape. I think this is one of the highlights of the set. I really like it. Infernape is one of those Pokemon that is so loved, and such a loved Pokemon, but it hasn't actually had much spotlight in the TCG or any sets that you go, wow, Infernape is incredible. This is a really cool illustration, I really like it. I would love to see Torterra as well and Empoleum in some artworks. We did get the Empoleum V in Sword and Shield, which is really great. Torterra hasn't had their time in the sun. I'd love for Torterra to come through as well, but the Infernape is looking for sensational here. And I think it's gonna be a real highlight of the set. Illustration rares are obviously really great. They, they add a lot of flavor to the set. They just make a set seem more enticing. And one thing about Scarlet and Violet, guys, and one thing that I have personally loved is it's not always about these valuable cards, right? You don't wanna, sometimes when you're opening Sword and Shield packs, if you don't hit the, the Vs or you don't hit the Vmaxes, the old arts, you feel like, oh, what a waste. You know, the, the, the booster box didn't really perform well. What I love about Illustration Res is they really have brought back the enjoyment of the pack opening experience. I think a lot of people criticize Scarlet and Violet, which is fair enough. You, you know, that, 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 that criticism is a part of growth. But where we look at Scarlet and Violet is the pack opening experience for some of these is gonna be sensational. It's gonna bring a lot of memories for the you know new and upcoming collectors because you know when you pull an illustration rare, it still adds to an enjoyment of the set. It, not everything has to be crazy valuable, man. You don't always have to pull the two hundred dollar card, the hundred and fifty dollar card. It can be an, a fun, enjoyable. You pull these illustration rares; they're nice ten, you know, ten, eleven dollars. You know that they, they, they add a lot of depth to a set, and I'm such a big fan of Illustration Res. Not only that, Pokemon's really stepped the bar up, and they, they make it hard for other TCGs to compete with their artworks, man, because they put in so much effort with these Illustration Res. They put it, they, they, they make such a good way that they work in with it. But guys, the next one I wanna go through is the Eevee Illustration Rare, and 
Look, this one for the Crimson Haze, the Japanese version is selling for 12 US, which is actually quite, you know, that's a decent price for an illustration rare, considering when you look at other ones. This one is one I would be slightly looking out for just because we know how strong the EV market is. The EV Lucians, especially in Gen 8, where they all got their crazy VMAX all art versions or their full art versions, they usually perform really well. The fact that we have a base illustration rare Eevee is really great. I think this would have really suited 151. I think it's got a unique opportunity, you know, given the fact that it's such a cozy artwork, it really ties into that. Like I said, Pokemon as pets, people love that. It's definitely one to look out for for the illustration rares. Eevee Lucians are kind of the most popular in all of Pokemon, all of them. People just love them, and you know, for great reasons. Some of the evolutions, you know, even for me, I love Umbreon. I love Jolteon, love Sylveon. I, I love them all. Like, there's not one evolution that I'm not a fan of. So, you know, it brings in a lot of collectors. A lot of people just enjoy it. So this one's definitely one that you have to look out for to see where it can go. Moving forward, I'll also the Pinsir. Pinsir's looking sensational here. Pinsir has actually, you know, there is a bit of fun trivia about him. Pinsir never got a Mega Evolution TCG card. Super shame because the Mega Evolution was really well loved and people really used it, especially in competitive, right? If you played competitive Pokemon. Never actually got a, a TCG release, which is kind of a shame. Guys, I did actually make a video of the top 10 cards that I believe will skyrocket. I feel free to check it out because I talk about Mega Evolution Full Arts and with the release of Pokemon Legends ZA and how well I think that Mega Evolution Full Arts are going to perform. So, you know, Pinsir never got the Mega Evolution artwork, but it did kind of spark that memory that I think they are cards to look out for. Feel free to check that video out. But yeah, this is a great artwork and I think it's going to, I don't think it's going to be anything special, but it's just, it adds, like I said, adds flavor to the set. The big ones that we, I want to talk about guys today are both the EX cards from Twilight Masquerade so far. First off, I want to go into the Ursa Luna. Now guys, for those that you don't know, Ursa Luna was a major Pokemon for Legends Arceus. It was a real, real big hit. People were just really obsessed with it, right? They, 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 and not in that, the way you had to evolve this thing was like, oh, dude, it was like, you have to have like a full moon and 500 little things to make sure that it could evolve. Really wild how it actually evolves. It was actually a real fan favorite for Legends Arceus, and it was one of the Pokemon that actually got people hyped for the game. Um, and it's great to finally see it come out in a full art artwork. I do think that the artwork is okay. Okay, I think they could have done a bit more with the personality of Ursa Luna. I think they kind of just made it look like it's eating and it's kind of cool. But I think given the fact how it was marketed for the game and how ferocious it was as a Pokemon, I think, you know, they could have added a bit of the moon. They could have given it a bit more of a edge, a bit more of a night kind of vibe. You know, I feel like they, I wouldn't say they missed the mark here. They kind of just took it in a different approach. I kind of feel like for Ursa Luna, we got a bit of a watered down version of what was possible for this card. So look, it, it, it's, it's still cool. It's still cool that we got the full art. But guys, the real one that I'm looking out for, and it is sensational, is the Greninja full art. Now this is where Pokemon just show you what they are capable of when they want to make an awesome artwork. It is so in your face. It is one of those cards that I can just imagine you ripping open your pack and pulling this card. I don't even think you need to understand Pokemon cards to know that this is a hit. If you pulled this out, you'd be like, damn, I have just pulled some good card. It is in your face. It is such a great artwork. I love the colors. I love how expressive it is. And you know what? Greninja finally gets some cool time in the sun. This is obviously my favorite card right now in Twilight Masquerade, and it's obviously the Chase. Super, super cool card, and one that I'm gonna be looking out for, and I definitely wanna add this one to my collection, but I'm gonna just have to see how it goes. I think not knowing without pull rates, this is the one to look out for for Twilight Masquerade in terms of how I think it's gonna perform. I think it's gonna be kind of similar to Iron Crown. So given the fact that we're not actually working with that many cards that are that good in Twilight Masquerade, I think this one you know, is the one to look out for. It kind of gets a real, real nice overlook and it kind of does look like it's the best performer. Whether or not if other cards were in the set would it perform this well, I'm not sure, but this one's definitely one to look out for. Now guys, in terms of Twilight Masquerade as how I think it's gonna go, 
If you want my honest opinions on the set so far, just looking at the cards, but I do think the set is very muted. I think it is undercooked as a set, and I think it's a massive step back from Temporal Forces. When I saw Temporal Forces, I thought this was the direction Scarlet and Violet, they're heading in a great direction. I loved it. I thought it was, I still think Temporal Forces is probably the best set of Scarlet and Violet so far. And I say that with full confidence, it is sensational. This set feels undercooked for me, man. I am not enjoying Twilight Masquerade. I think it is not that good of a set. I think now with what, when they added Temporal Forces, I thought that was gonna be their next step. They were gonna level up even more. And it feels like they kind of went back to a really, really watered down set like Obsidian Flames. So just looking at Twilight Masquerade at the moment, in terms of an investment, I don't think it's going to go anywhere that well. The only kind of outlet opportunity you have is that everyone finds the set boring, so no one buys it. And in five years, it becomes like a little bit of like a Rebel Clash scenario. Rebel Clash kind of, I go I go through why Rebel Clash went up in my in previous videos, kind of how it got blindsided by the Pokemon boom. I like the Greninja. I think it's cool, but I do think as a set, Twilight Masquerade leaves a lot to be desired. And I do think it is, it feels almost unfinished as a set. You know, I, I there's nothing in it that's really pulling me like, oh, I need to rip it open. It's it, the box art actually, it, it looks like it's packaged nicer than what you're gonna actually get inside. And I think that's really disappointing because I think that with the box art and how good the set looks from a visual perspective, I know those booster packs are gonna look amazing on shelves. Like I said, it's a muted set. It just feels like they didn't wanna go that next level. They kind of held back with the set. It's personal opinion on how I feel with Twilight Masquerade. But you know, Pokemon, Collecting is changing guys and you know with the new introduction of illustration rares You were able to pick up a lot of cards for cheap which kind of leaves us with a question What are the best Pokemon cards to buy under $10? Well, thankfully I do answer that in this video Which I'm going to link for you right now where I cover the eight best Pokemon cards under eight dollars So guys, I really recommend you watch that so you can see if you are collecting on a budget what are the best Pokemon cards under $8? And I'll see you there, guys.